as teenagers, if you can remember back that far, as teenagers, we always wanted to be in the in crowd, right? To be considered cool or accepted by the popular kids. Wearing all the right styles, going to all the cool parties, even dating the most popular girl or boy, the quintessential head cheerleader or the quarterback of the football team. But nowadays, kids are even more drawn to being accepted and celebrated. But social media has pretty much replaced cheerleading and football as the vehicles for popularity. Desiring clicks, likes, and follows is what drives many kids. Being famous, being influencers, is what many teenagers today want to do when they grow up. No longer is the goal to make the world a better place. Now the goal is to influence others into making the world a better place. A subtle and yet significant shift. A lot has been said and published about the racial and sexual dimensions of being in the in crowd in our society. White privilege is a phrase that became well known during the pandemic as our culture wrestled with the death of George Floyd and others. Privilege is about being in the in crowd, enjoying special treatment and special opportunities. Being in the in crowd versus being out of the in crowd. Although with so much attention and favor given to those supposedly in the outs, it tends to flip the script making it in to be in the outs nowadays. Our passage this morning talks a lot about being in. In fact, the word in is found 13 times in our short passage. Let's look again at John 14, verses 1 through 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. This is Jesus speaking. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Now the older I get, the less I feel the need to be in the in crowd. I don't really care if the clothes I wear are in style or not, obviously. <laughs> and I don't crave the acceptance of popular people so much anymore. Rather, I wear clothes that are comfortable whether or not they are in style, and I crave the company of friends and family regardless of whether or not they are popular, and most of them are not. And I don't really care how many followers I have on social media. But this is something, as I get older, that I do desire to be in. Actually, it is someone. 
I want to be in Christ more than anything. Because when all is said and done, being in Christ is what matters most. Our passage from John's Gospel speaks of being in the Father and the Father in us, as well as Christ being in the Father and the Father in him. It also talks about believing in God and believing in Jesus. Now, Paul uses a familiar phrase related to this. Paul speaks of being in Christ or in the Lord in terms of being in the body of Christ, the church. He uses the phrase similarly to John, but a bit different. Paul's usage defines being in Christ as interchangeable with being saved. John uses a similar phrase to describe the close relationship that we have with God. And John uses another phrase that uses the word in. Verse 14 says, If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Now, immaturely, we assume that that means tagging our prayers with in Jesus' name, but it is much deeper than that. To ask in Jesus' name means to ask in harmony with Jesus, with his character, with his essence. To ask in the name of Jesus is to ask from within his will. And one cannot hope to ask from within the character of Jesus if one is not in Christ, in relationship with Jesus, in harmony with his character, in alliance with his will. So, Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz is not what we're talking about. It's not what Jesus is talking about here nor is it what Paul or John means. The in that I'm talking about and what John and Paul are talking about is all about belonging. J.D. Walt of Seedbed fame likes to talk about the shift in our Christian thinking from believing and behaving to belonging and becoming. From believing and behaving to belonging and becoming. I like that because it shifts the onus from ourselves to others and to the one from whom all blessings flow. Believing and behaving has to do with us, what we do, what we think, what we, uh, what we act like. But belonging and becoming has to do with Jesus and the people who follow Jesus, the church. It has to do with being in, in the grace of God, in the body of Christ, in right relationship with Almighty God. That's the in crowd that I want to be part of. And it's the crowd that I am in. How about you? Are you in? If you are, then let's praise the Lord together in worship. But if you're not sure, let me invite you. All it takes is the desire to be in, and to say yes to Jesus. In a few moments, we'll be celebrating communion, and all that is required for you to partake of communion in this church is to desire to be in with Jesus. You don't have to belong to this church. You don't even have to be baptized. You just have to desire to be in with Jesus. And if your desire is to be in with Jesus, he is more than willing more than willing to receive you. So what's stopping you? Let us spend a few moments in prayerful silence as we consider what God may be speaking to our hearts today.